Hello YouTube, this is Awakened Saint, also known as Mike in the Real World. The date is July 5th, 2022, and I don't know uh, who knows this situation, but a good friend of ours, she's a friend of yours even if you don't know it, Rachel Ringstra was attacked not too long ago. Now, the details are in the GoFundMe that I'll put in the description She's been a, a friend of my YouTube channel. I've known her through Photo Helix, and she is a truthful person, does not deserve what has happened to her. And I encourage you, if you have anything, she does need your help. I normally do not ask for any donations on this channel. You guys know that. And I don't ask for any money for myself at all, and have never have. If you guys, if everyone on the channel could give a dollar, if half of the subscribers could give a dollar, that would help her out a great deal. So please uh, take a few minutes and watch the reel that will uh, help you understand who she is a little bit and donate if you have it. If you don't donate, pray. And if you do donate, pray because all things are done through Jesus Christ. Hope you're all doing well. Bob, I am here at Tree Route 76 right now where things really seem to be jammed. How lucky am I? what I really wanted to do was to host a show where I traveled the world. So you imagined something that didn't exist yet. Yeah, I created an ideal scene for myself. Rachel took her life savings and started traveling the world, videotaping herself with animals. After auditioning dozens of actresses, Discovery's Animal Planet announced the host of its new show, Ms. Adventure. He wraps himself around really tight and constricts them until they die. Then he eats them whole. It's like binging at Thanksgiving, except it's like swallowing the whole turkey. Oh, I am full. Our insider into animal conservation, host of ABC's The Wildlife Docs, Rachel Reenstra. I do not understand hunting for sport. I never will. But I also know that there are two sides to every story. She is the host of ABC's Emmy nominated show, The Wildlife Docs, and here to show us some scorpions and tarantulas. Oh, my. Please welcome Rachel Reenstra. <laughs> It's Halloween, so why don't we bring out yeah. the star of the show, Tarantula. Now, guys, I'm just going to tell you, don't be afraid of this guy. They flick their hairs in defense. So you like see that Valley Girls. Excuse yes, me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be talking to you that way. There's only one place where you'll come face to face with more than 12,000 animals representing over 300 species. Welcome to 104.5, U.S. station for bat echolocation. It was a great day. However, I feel kind of weird. I feel like I was bit when I was in there. I don't know. Probably being paranoid, you know. <laughs> I'm so dramatic. Recently, some new birds have joined the flock, but you think they'll be able to waddle the waddle? Let's find out. I guess you'd call that eagle to Terry. <laughs> but now I'm here in the Bahamas to see an animal that's dressed to kill. To really appreciate this animal, you have to pick it up and hold it. You know, Eric, I can appreciate it right here. <laughs> I can appreciate you without holding you. I'm Rachel Reenstra. I'm Rachel Reenstra. Oh, am I still Rachel Reenstra? I am so tired of being Rachel Reenstra again and again. Join us next week for another animal adventure with the Wildlife Talks. Looks like all that's left to say now is after a while, crocodile. I gotta tell you, I for one have had a good night. That's Australian for a good day. He understood me. Welcome back to America's Voice Live. I'm Mike Garofalo. Time for a look at the news. President Trump earlier today unveiled a large $19 billion relief package for farmers and ranchers hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic. The aid was first proposed last month. It includes $16 billion in direct payments to farmers 
It's also an additional $3 billion for a food box program through the Department of Agriculture. Its goal is to ensure families don't go hungry. The payments will be available May 26. They will help compensate farmers for losses they have experienced during the outbreak. All right, here are some of the major coronavirus developments that are making headlines. A human trial for a vaccine by the biotech company Moderna has shown promising results. They're moving on to the next round of testing now. If the trials continue going well, the vaccine could potentially be approved by the end of the year. Only 45% of small and medium businesses plan to rehire the same employees when they reopen, according to a survey by Facebook. And Georgia has been caught manipulating data to try to make it look like their number of cases is going down. They published a graph that put different dates out of, in order to make it seem like things were rapidly improving. 82% of people have worn a mask out in the public in the last two weeks, and the restrictions beginning to loosen is helping people's mental health. Only 47% of people say they worry a lot daily, down from 59% about a month ago, and 72% say they're happy for most of the day, up from 67%. And the CDC has warned that the coronavirus could lead to a measles outbreak down the road because people are skipping their baby's immunization appointments. Finally, more than 4.1 million Americans are now skipping their mortgage payments. All right, time to hear from the Hollywood conservative. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Hollywood Conservative on America's Live. I'm looking very forward to talking to my next guest. She is a four-time Emmy-nominated host of ABC's The Wildlife Doc. She's also a comedian, an actress, a writer, and a wildlife conservationist. Rachel Reinstra, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Great to have you on the show. Okay, so I discovered you through a friend of a friend on social media, and I know that you have been speaking out about a lot of issues. You have a lot of videos out there, and uh, a lot of times these are topics that mainstream media especially doesn't want to talk about. So tell us a little bit about your genesis. You started out in Hollywood, your career in Hollywood, to what you do now. Well, that's a lot. I moved out of here. I'm, I'm in Los Angeles most of the time. And I moved out about 26 years ago to get into comedy. And I also love animals. And so it's been an amazing ride. But what I found is once I started making um, videos that brought out the truth about certain things, like the chemicals in the air that we're breathing, um, all of a sudden, it wasn't as easy to get work anymore. But what's exciting to me is all the people that are waking up right now. It's it's incredible. I mean, people that are realizing we're here to <laughs> live a healthy, wonderful life and not not be sprayed. But if anyone speaks ab out about it, like the doctor I was telling you about in the chemtrail video, he's not for vaccinations. He is for your health and your immunity. And I honestly think that that's what we need to be focusing on. But when someone else that, like any doctor, like Judy Makovitz and uh, Dr. Buddha, Dr. Shiva, they all somehow get silent. So it's 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 a quandary. And you, being a newscaster, have you ever experienced that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> uh, very very recently, I partnered with an organization on a campaign uh, relating to coronavirus, and our videos just keep getting taken down. So unfortunately, if you offer a counter, uh, social media and mainstream media, they don't seem to appreciate that. But speaking of that, let's talk about this pandemic, this global pandemic. Uh, what's your take on what's happening right now? It's not going to be popular. <laughs> But, and people might call it a conspiracy theorist, but CIA made that word up back when people were questioning authority when JFK was assassinated. And what I feel is happening is it's the numbers don't add up. Something just doesn't feel right about everything that they're telling us in mainstream, you know? So I'm not going to say there's not a virus, but I will say that there's an agenda behind the virus that I think is being pushed which is forced, va forced vaccinations, contact tracing. I mean, it's an Orwellian society we're living in now, it feels like. And people know it, they can feel it. I mean, not, we might, might not agree on politics, but what we can agree is that something isn't right. Like everyone in the world realized that Jeffrey Epstein did not suicide himself. We all know that. 
we all feel that something is not right about this virus. What's going on? What's the truth behind it? And for us to get to the truth nowadays is really difficult because people have been looking to the media for the truth. And trust me, I've been in the media. I've been on television. There's been many things on television that people used to believe Gilgan's Island, there were actually people stranded on an island. <laughs> That's how powerful television is. So I think that there's a, this is a cover up for something bigger. So if, okay, let, let's, let's go down the road of forced vaccination. So if, if coronavirus is uh, an opportunity for whether it's federal authorities, state authorities, whoever, to enforce forced vaccinations, to what end? How, how does that um, benefit? You know, is there something in the vaccines that we're concerned about? Obviously, the contact tracing scares the bejesus out of me because I don't mm -hmm. need the government following me any more than they already do. But with respect to vaccines, how does that benefit, uh, let's, let's say it, Orwellian political leaders mm -hmm. to force these vaccinations in a mass capacity? I would, I would just tell everybody to, um, sorry, he's getting a call. I would tell everybody to please do your research, okay? Because I'm not gonna tell you something. What, what do I know? You know, I'm a, I'm a comedian, I'm a wildlife conservationist, I'm an actress, but what I see from the research I've done are patents, patents that are labeled, funded by Bill Gates and Microsoft, labeled 060606. I mean, IV 2020, you look it up and it's literally, it's gonna be a cashless society. We're gonna to have to have a quantum dot tattoo, which is basically, you know, some people might call it the mark of the beast, but if they don't want conspiracy theorists out there saying that, how about not label a patent 666? Six, six. Just a thought, just yeah. a thought. But do your own research yeah. on that. People need to be asking questions right now. And the whole vaccine thing, it's not that I'm against vaccines, I've traveled the world. I've had to take some vaccines before I went to Africa. But it's not the same vaccine. Sometimes it takes them years to find the right. And every year, there's a different strain of the flu. Why are they pushing vaccines so much like that? we got to get a vaccine for this. When the numbers are the same for people who die of the flu, and we still have a choice about that. So I think if they take away our freedom of choice, then, I mean, they're already trying to take away our freedom of speech. And George Orwell even said, liberty means nothing if we can't tell people what they don't want to hear, <laughs> you know? And so everyone yeah. just needs, it doesn't take a lot of research to look this stuff up, guys. It really doesn't. And if more people can speak out and not be afraid of the almighty dollar and not be afraid of losing their job, then we might have us, we might be able to stand up against this. So let's, we just got about a minute left, so I want to focus in on your wildlife conservation. Um, what, what is it that you do in your daily life to that end? Oh. Well, I just got back from Tenerife. I was volunteering for a dog shelter there um, in the Canary Islands. And I take people on trips to Costa Rica so that people have more education about the ecotourism and also the animals that we're losing on this planet because it's 65% of all the animals are gone now. So. I feel since I've had a platform and I've traveled the world and compared animal and human behavior on Animal Planet Discovery, and I feel like now I want to take it to the next level and bring people with me on an ecotourism trip that they can actually see what's out there for themselves and educate kids about this. Like it's going to be their future. Yeah. So it's really important for me to take people on trips so they have that experience with with animals. And there are so many incredible animals to see, and not in a zoo, but in we have to start doing something because we're losing them. And education is the first I know thing. It. Um, but I love it. I my agree. daily life is, I mean, I, I get to do what I love. I get to travel. I get, I still get to help animals and speak up about wildlife conservation and, and also do stand up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird combination. We, sh we should all aspire to do something like that that we love so much, and I agree. All right, everybody, head over to her website, rachelreenstra.com. Rachel, it was a pleasure having you on, and we'll talk to you soon. And, my dear, we're going to head it back over to you all, uh, Mike, in Denver. That's a really long intro. I can't play that whole thing.
<laughs> I was like, oh my God. I was like, what's happening? Did I just start a live stream? Did I press something wrong? <laughs> Don't really mess with my mind. Here it is. Please whisper soft. Let the breeze blow down.